Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show on this Tuesday. Tuesday, getting toward the end of August, August 29th, 2023. Thank you for tuning in. Now, here we get started. Is I couldn't quite believe this article, but it's in all the top news from routers. It says that Saudi border guards are killing hundreds of Ethiopian migrants. Is that true? I'll read on a little bit here. It says, uh, it says uh, Saudi Arabia border guards have killed hundreds of Ethiopian migrants, including women and children who attempted to enter the kingdom along its mountainous border with Yemen. A human watch group has said on Monday in a 73-page report. Uh, the rights group said Saudi guards used explosive weapons to kill some migrants and shot at others at close range. And so on. Kind of a little bit shocking. And I wonder, uh, well, I don't know. It's a bad world out there right now we live in. Now, the next thing we got to take a look at here is the hurricane that's just off the coast of Florida. And I mean, it is today, it is going to be gaining speed like you. This is going to be one of the quickest growing hurricanes. I've seen a few others grow really intensify really quickly. But this is going to be one of them that really, really picks up speed really, really fast. Oh, it's only a cat. I think it's a cat one right now. It's 80 mile an hour right now. Looking at the information, its center is located at 23.8 degrees north and 84.8 degrees west. And it's 80 miles an hour. is moving north at 14 miles per hour. Now, one of the things about it is... It's moving north at extremely fast. For hurricanes generally meander five, six miles an hour's average speed. Maybe seven miles an hour. This thing's moving 14 miles an hour. It's moving very quickly to the north. So you got to make your preparations fast for this thing. And it's going to be ex uh, quite explosively powerful. Now, a lot of, I'm going to tell you, they don't talk about this enough with hurricanes. When the hurricane approaches, one of the biggest potential dangers from the hurricane is something called a storm surge. There's a relationship between the moon and the storm surge, and it's got to do with timing. The moon creates the tides, and it's got to do with timing. The tides go in and out. If it's on a, if it's on, the tide is right, it can increase the potential danger of the storm surge by a lot. Okay, so we keep keep our eye on that. Now, Von Grayers is saying, "Will this be the fall of falls? In other words, a crash of crashes." Uh. What I tend to think is, is, I look at a few of the topics here he's got. Uh, he's warning investors about the consequence of a system based on unlimited money printing and debt creation and money debasement. He says the world economy and the financial system is now on the cusp of a precipice. No one can forecast when the coming violent turn will come. He says it could take years or it could happen tomorrow. Uh, global debt is up over 80 times from 1971. And there's a risk of markets falling 50 to 90%. I think 50% is a, is a, I think it's more, it's more, to the downside than that if they let it go. And this is the thing. I just said what I just said, if they let it go. So risk of markets falling 50 to 
The system can't take that. Everybody would go bankrupt if they lost 50% of everything. You know, I mean, it's gone, or 90% is even worse. No, no, nobody, these businesses out there, everybody, see, what's happened is the small mom and pop's businesses, some of them that are not, connected to the banking system and stuff like that. They've all went bankrupt during COVID. It just wiped everybody out. The, the business, businesses, that like, you get a little restaurant down the street, and they don't got, the bank doesn't have a toehold on them. They got wiped out. The only, most of the businesses that survived everything now are businesses that had these big secured bank loans and stuff, floor plans and, and huge, gigantically, they got into the money pool, and they were able to manage to make it through. And they're still here, but because they're connected to the banking system, because they're so intrinsically connected to their banks, a fall of 50 to 90% is just going to wipe everybody out. It's gonna, it, you can't, they can't go there. They won't let it go there. They're not going to let it fall 50 to 90%. They're going to step in. If this thing starts to fall, it falls 20%, 20, 25%. They're going to step in and stop it, and they're going to push it back up again. But they're waiting until it falls 25% before they do that. And that's what we're waiting for. And that's what I call the deflationary spike event, is when it does fall some, but they catch it. And then they push it back up. But pushing it back up this time, when they catch it and they push it back up and they start the money printers again to fix it, it's going to be... Inflationary isn't the word. I have to use the word hyperinflationary for what's going to happen. And that's going to happen. It's just a matter of when. U.S. Chinese agree to discuss export controls. The Commerce Secretary visits Beijing. It says Commerce Secretary Gina Ramaldo says that she and her Chinese counterparts agreed Monday to exchange information on U.S. export controls that frustrate Beijing and set up a group to discuss other commercial issues. But neither side appeared ready to make concessions on the disputes that have plunged relations to their lowest levels in decades. Mrs. Romaldo joined American officials, including Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen in July, who have visited China in hopes of reviving Chile relations. They expressed optimism about improved communications, but no progress on conflicts over technology, security, human rights, uh, and a lingering tariff war. That's a trade war. So, basically, they expressed optimism, it says here, but no progress. It says, Rissus Romaldo and her uh, Commerce Minister Wang agreed during a four-hour meeting to launch an information exchange on export, export controls. She says they'll also set up a working group as officials and private sector representatives try to seek solutions on trade and investment issues. A key Chinese complaint is limit to access on processor chips and other U.S. technologies on security grounds that threaten to hamper the ruling Communist Party's ambition to develop artificial intelligence and in other industries. The curbs crippled the smartphone business of Huawei. China's first global tech brand. Okay, and moving on now. Rising supermarket thefts, it says here. A symptom of deeper moral decline. Yeah. You know, they, they say it's a symptom of deeper moral decline. That's what it says here. I don't think so. I think it's a symptom of hunger, because what do they carry in the supermarkets? Food. People are getting hungry. It is desperation. Their stomach's growling, and they're going in there, and they're trying to, because they haven't got any money, they're trying to slide something in their pocket and go through the door. 
That's what I think is going on. Now here's an article that's kind of interesting right here. Pallets are exhausted. And, and a new survey suggests that three out of four European pallets dozed off over the course of a month while flying the airplane. So you're in the back. And they got them little doors there. <laughs> and they shut the door. And they lock it. And they got no way. You can't even peek in to see what they're doing. Of course they're asleep. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Why not? I mean, you can't see what they're doing. They got autopilot. And there's more than one pilot. Of course he's going to look over at the other guy and say, you want to go to sleep? Yeah, I'm really sleepy. Well, go ahead and go to sleep. I got it here. You know, I mean... <laughs> And they're on autopilot and everything. And he says, fine, go ahead and go. I'll wake you up once we get there. <laughs> you know, of course they're going to do that. It says three out of four European pilots dozed up. Well, they do it everywhere. Not just Europe. I mean, this they're just exposing the tip of the iceberg to this, probably. You know? <laughs> but you guys didn't know it. You just find out about it now, you know. Anyway, I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, in this, in this world, does it get any worse? Doesn't get any worse. You're in the back and thinking, oh, I'm so secure. I got great pallets up front there behind those little closed doors, and they're doing their job, and you're looking out the window and everything. It's all autopilot. <laughs> you know, it's if they set a switch, switch and forget it. I'm just saying. I mean, that's what I think, anyway. I'm not saying... Uh, whether that's absolute true doctrine or whatever, or just saying that's what I think is going on. Anyway, silver price today. Here we go. It's up 11 cents on the day so far. So it's looking good at 24.31. You know why they can't knock the hell out of the silver price? And oh, by gosh, they'd love to. They'd love to knock the hell out of it. They'd love to knock it down to about $13 right now and then scoop up all the physical for themselves. Well, for one thing, over there in the Shanghai Gold Exchange in the, in the uh, Chinese and the other countries over there in the East, they're supporting the price now, for one thing. And the second thing is they're almost out of physical silver. They've got very little inventory. And the mines out there is what they rely upon for that inventory. And the miners are going to say, hey, you know what? Costs, of, oh my gosh, costs for miners have went up. Unbelievable what it costs them to get an ounce of silver out of the ground now. And it's going up by daily. And this price right here? There's not enough profit margin for the miners for them to fool around and, and knock this price down very far. They'll run right smack into mining production costs. And if they go below mining production costs, they know they know business. They know companies don't work unless they make a, at least a small margin of profit. If they're going to take a loss, any company in their right mind, if they're going to take a loss, they're just gonna, not going to produce the product. It's, that's the bottom line. Taking a look now at uh, Bitcoin today. Is it 26? Oh, do, do we do the silver price? Yeah, we did the silver price. See, we didn't do gold. I keep forgetting to do gold every time. Gold's at 1920. It's up 90 cents on the day. So cryptocurrency today is 26,035 for Bitcoin. Ethereum is at 1644. And XRP is at 51 cents. Dow Jones Industrial Average is up 90 points at 34,650. This is so over leveraged, it's unbelievable. But it's not as leveraged as it was about a year ago when it was the same, basically, even a little bit higher, a little bit over, a little bit over a year ago. Because of inflation has eaten away the leverage to a certain degree. What you could purchase with your dollars that were in this market just over a year ago was more. It was probably 16, I'm just going to guess, I'm going to say 16 to 20% more you could purchase with your dollars 
from this market. So it's lost about 16% of its purchasing power. That has to count for something. Now, crude oil today is $80. Right on the button, $80. It's like I told you, they'll keep it at 80 for a little while. Everybody, as soon as you guys get, I'll get used to the price being at $80. And the price at the pumps at a certain amount, I... Not exactly sure what it is in the United States right now, but that, that once you get used to that, boom, it's going to go up again. Watch. Uh, now, we're taking a look at these bond yields today. And I want to point something out. This is very important. Look at that 10-year, 4.15, is it? Look at just behind it at the, at the seven year, 4.27, and the U.S. 20 years higher, 4.48. And this is these two, the 10 year and the 30 year, being kept down artificially. And this should be absolutely obvious right now. When you move into the shorter end of the yield curve, everybody's over 5%. Four months, three months, five and a half, you know? Six month, five and five point five nine. Everybody's well in excess of five percent. And then you move down here for the long bonds, and especially this ten years, artificially low at four point one five. It's the lowest of all the bonds. Why? Why the ten year specifically? Is because that's what all debt's priced off of. I got a sneaking suspicion if that ten year were to explode up. Say it were to go past five percent, head to six percent or whatever, or five and a half, or five and three quarters. I think it would be a big bust up, and I think they know that they're artificially controlling the price of that ten year and they're keeping it lowest of all the bonds. That's what I think's going on. U.S. Uh, dollar index today is exploding to the upside today. At 404.19. Thank you guys for listening to my show. Like and subscribe. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. And have a great afternoon. Bye bye.